Hello everybody. In this video, you're going to meet Misha and Sasha. And I met this great couple in early April when we were first there and they were helping out down in Lublin at Convoy of Hope. Uh, Misha is just the nicest guy and he was running a auto service center. Uh, he was certified with several automakers in Kyiv and had 15 employees. And in, on February 24th, when the war hit, um, they left their apartment, they left their business, uh, like I say, 15 employees, uh, and just basically tried to get out. It took them two and a half days to go less than 15 miles, and you'll hear their story here. And they are wonderful people. They have passport and uh, visa problems because they're really, uh, they're originally from Belarus. So they're Belarusians, and in Ukraine, most Ukrainians would consider the Belarusians uh, to be uh, enemies or part of the uh, satellite orbit of Russia. And so you'll hear some of that in their testimony as how when they were leaving, the others would, in the huge traffic jam, saw their uh, Belarus license plate and uh, how God just delivered them through that. It's just a neat story. So I hope you really enjoy this and be praying for Misha and Sasha that that God would uh, get their passports cleared up. His passport book is full, it's stamped completely full, and uh, it's, he can't get a new one. He, they can't risk going back to Belarus. So they're just in a state of limbo. There are two people, honestly, without a country. Fortunately, they said, Poland has, has been sympathetic to the people from Belarus and has not just kicked them out. So enjoy this, and then uh, we'll update you later with more videos. God bless. Here we are waking up at, on February 24th and, um, you know, boom, the explosion. And here it goes. Mm -hmm. So Misha went to work in the morning. The roads were packed the first hour or two, so we understood it was impossible to get out. So Misha went to work, you know, paid the guys. So the, <clears throat> the morning started from first of all's explosion and the windows were like uh, well, yeah, shaking. But, you know, yes. We were asked to have uh, the brief version of the story we start to have uh, phone calls this is how i employ yeah like you know the building wakes up like this yes. everyone wakes up you see people jumping in their cars leaving people calling each other the lines are busy someone's panicking we had our team members um can i take care of that or... oh <laughs> just give us five minutes okay yeah. five minutes <laughs> <laughs> so we, we can get ready and then when she comes yes, back, that yes. good. we want a good version of it. We had uh, several phone calls from our employees because they were panicking. Many of them were not prepared for that. And it took Misha, I don't know, I can't remember exactly, but maybe an hour, two hours, just to talk to the key personnel and say, hey, this is what's going on. We do this and this, and you do this and this, because some of them were really panicking. Uh, so he was not like, panicking, just shaking. They couldn't even they, say uh, anything. Just you were talking wow, about they were the swallowing yeah. the water. They were in shock. I said, okay, yeah. just, just please, just please calm down and God will protect us all. God will keep us all. So mm -hmm. just let us pray to you. So we prayed with several people mm -hmm. because they were in the same conditions. Just, I was first, just for a second, I was also just in a panic. When I heard that Sasha said, okay, it started. Wow. And I heard like windows, yeah, they were breaking. So on. But I said, but, but but I said to myself, okay, God will protect us. God will yeah. keep us. So everything will be fine. Yeah. You know, so it was, yeah, it was. We live moment. not far from the airport. So um, that's why it was very close. Yeah. So, you know, by the time we talked to many people, it was already too late. To go anywhere and say well you know to finish everything shut down everything mm -hmm. but the dangerous would be like if they explode the, the bridge yeah so, because we live in one bank and uh, the work is on the on the other uh, i said okay maybe i should buy a, a inflatable boat and come <laughs> back just in case and leave yeah. one car here so it was just you know it was crazy, crazy. Your brain just but, but but i said i said they say we will be in six hours in kiev i said no no one in history can do it, even Hitler. He said the six hours, six hours, but everyone at least needs one week. So I said we need. Oh, I so we we have like several days. So yeah, we had to, to yeah, because we know it's two hundred something kilometers from the border. So even yeah. if the tanks 
rush fast and they need no you know opposition or anything they will still be here in a day or two so we have like 24 to 48 hours before right. they're literally here right you know of course the rockets and the planes will be flying but yeah. god will protect us yeah so it was like around seven seven ish six or seven i can't remember that we got in the cars and we left and we were supposed to join Lita and joel uh where they stay with their family but by the time like we, part way or something uh they were near kiev and we weren't even you know what we weren't even thinking about going to poland if you're good yeah <laughs> okay so this friend of ours who uh, was texting misha because we were in separate cars he was driving first i was following him and i did not know that he was in contact with our german friends so um by the time we needed to make the turn misha stopped and he said like we better leave and we better go to the west i said okay let's go to the west to be so we called uh, Ira and joel and said hey guys we decided to go to the west so i'm sorry we're not going to be joining you please like if you decide to go we'll be happy to join you in Lviv." so it took us um like then we started we went to beef and you know since we didn't take the road from the very beginning we were kind of like out of we, we should we should we should we should uh say about the road i will i will it's just that it took us maybe two hours to get to the main road and i was going like oh okay well, i wish we were the, at the highway i wish we we're at the highway but then we got to the highway and I realized that I wish we went, we didn't get to the highway. Oh, no. what happened. Usually that, that's what it looked like. There was a highway, three lanes one way, three lanes the other way. And there is this, uh, you know, like divider, divider in the middle. When we get, got there, eight lanes were going one way. And we were like, what? And you know, we're coming from this back road where there is no light, no nothing. And all, all of a sudden we're here, the highway, and everybody's going to the west. Wow. It's like, how do we get, you know, what do we do? Do we just go up to, to the opposite direction? But we can because the traffic is yeah. not coming from that way. So we waited until there was some gap in the traffic. We made a turn and we went in the right lane. <laughs> Unfortunately for us, we went to the west. And it took us all night to drive several dozen kilometers because it was slow and it was very slow i think we made two two hundred kilometers this uh, yeah we got there i can't remember what were you we able to get fuel were you getting low at times oh no, i know no 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 we took care of it in advance because both okay. his yeah. car has the lpg tank and the, the gasoline and <laughs> Days before the war, I was telling him, go to the gas station, go to the gas station, go to the gas station. So he finally went to the gas station the night before the war to fill up the gasoline. But he didn't, he was tired, so he didn't fill up the LPG, right? LPG tank was, was empty. But, but in, the, in the gas station, in the morning, people, like in the five, probably in 15 minutes after the, the, the first explosion, I, I went to the gas gas station and everyone was for uh, for, for the yeah. gasoline like the huge huge line but the for lpg was only three cars <laughs> it's gone. and i built, built up my car uh, the night before and even before that i asked our manager to get us the like those cans mm -hmm. he only got maybe two 20 liter 10 liter cans he said this is they don't have any more so that I held filled out several days before the war. I think so. So we you had people got infused and had to leave their cars because they their cars would run out of gas. Waiting. Well, we were kind of prepared. You know, no one believed the thing is that even though there were rumors of war everywhere, all yeah. the TV shows, all the discussions in the media were about the war, but no one believed that it would happen. It was so crazy and so stupid that because no they, we thought they are not ready and they weren't ready actually oh, they we, still the war shows this showing this yes right, but right. It, it was crazy idea from the beginning but it's not it's like you know people know that it will happen but they still cannot believe that it will happen so we did not believe it would happen but still we um several days in advance i packed up suitcases like sleeping uh, like bed sheets pajamas towels it's just something we might need yeah. if something happens 
I took, I went through the documents, I sorted out all the documents, prepared, had them in, in a folder. So we were not, like, I bought cat food, I had the cats vaccinated three months in advance, just in case. Just in case, you know, everything. And the funny thing, when I went to the vet, uh, to, to the vet clinic to vaccinate the cats, everyone there was vaccinated just in case, you know. No. That just in case was just the theme of the day that day. So yeah, the cats were vaccinated, everything was packed, the canned food was bought. Like even I even prepared like dishes and uh, like just if we need to go really fast. So when it happened, yeah, I realized that, okay, I'm happy that I had some preparations and the cars are filled up. So we would have enough to go all the way to the Western Ukraine. I have, a hi I have a hybrid, so the consumption in my car is not that big, and Misha has to take, so we were safe. But we didn't think that we would go to the Western Ukraine. It just happened all the way that we realized we'll be going to the Western Ukraine. So it took us all night. I think we tried to stop for like half an hour just to get some sleep. The night before, I didn't get my sleep. I went to bed at 2 o'clock in the morning. You weren't alone. Just you stop on the gas station and hundreds of cars <laughs> nearby. Yeah, they all, all are yeah. sleeping. Yes. So by, yeah. by, by noon of the next day, we got to leave uh, Oblast, leave region, which is how many, like five kil 500 kilometers away or 400 kilometers away from Kiev, and it took us all night to get there. So we got there, and by the time we got there, uh, we realized, again, Misha was in contact with our German friend, and he said, you know, we're not staying in Ukraine, we're heading to Poland. I said, okay, like, <laughs> all right, that is a surprise, but what can we do? If, if we have to, we'll go. But luckily for us, our manager, another manager, he took a vacation, I think a week before the war, he said, oh, I'm gonna take my family to the western Ukraine, so I won't be at work for, for a week. Is that okay with you? I said, sure, fine. So we are there and uh, we realize that we have to cross the border, so we need to get rid of some of the stuff, like those computers and everything. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, you know, I said, can I meet with you? And we give you some stuff and because he was, uh, of, you know, he was not allowed out of Ukraine. Right, we all males eighteen yeah. to sixty were not yeah. allowed anywhere right. to out of Ukraine. Ukrainian. I am Belarus. Yeah, right. he's Belarus yeah. and Netherlands, yeah. so that's yeah. not pretty. Yeah. Well, there was something good about those passports, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we uh, met with him, and he said, "Why don't you guys just stay overnight because you're tired and it's a long way ahead?" But we thought, yeah, it will be a good idea just to sleep for a while. So we stayed in in, in an unheated house. <laughs> overnight because it was the house of their pastor's friends of the of the neighbors of those just some house in the village yeah. this was like february 25th or 6th uh, it was february it was no it was the night evening friday the night friday to saturday so it was 25th to the 26th mm -hmm. so we slept there we gave him part of our stuff freed some room yeah. at the car and then we got into the line we, the we, we were going through the line in, uh, we were heading into the line, and on the way, we understood that now our uh, passport and cars are Belarusian. Yeah. Because everyone on the street... Were Literally. Like, it's yeah. like in the movie, we had... Their license plate. License yeah. plate of Belarusian. And I can yeah. see in the rearview mirror that people are turning around, like, oh, like, what are they doing here? And they were look suspicious, like, huh? Like that. Every single person see, on the street. At my place, Warsaw plates. Everywhere I go in Poland, they finger me. They get upset. I mean, they don't like Warsaw. They hate Warsaw plates. Why? <laughs> trade Warsaw plates. Yeah, yeah. Warsaw plates. I, I don't know why they hate you Warsaw. Trade, you'll be okay. <laughs> and where, when they were looking, they weren't smiling. Okay? They were no. all <laughs> smiling. Like, no. oh, so we got yeah. stopped at several checkpoints because you know by that time there were checkpoints all over. Checkpoints were they on February 24th already so and every checkpoint looked at her license plate and said look at her passport and he was unlucky to be born in Russia so they said oh you were born in Russia huh? I lived only three years when I was small <laughs> <laughs> I'm not guilty <laughs> but then um okay so we uh, got through several checkpoints and we were directed to the line and the border 
Oh, it was Saturday. It was, I think, two o'clock Saturday by that time. And we hit the line. The line was 23 or 26 kilometers. I think 23, but might have been 26, just the line. And we get in this line. So we are staying, staying, staying there. And um, it's, it's, it was moving so slow. And uh, guys, like, we went, like, it was the crossroad. We went this way. We were checked at this checkpoint. We made a U-turn, got in the line, and then we hit the checkpoint again several hours later. And the guys there, some of them were nice, some of them were not. They were threatening Misha, like, you know, like, we have to kill you because you're Belarusian. We have to uh, just step oh, back. Yeah, the first from... guy said, this car will not go until to the end of the war. Yeah. No. And I, I should kill you, but uh, I, 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 will, I would not because you are not with a gun. So I'll, you just stay here. And you know, and there, um, there is a gun sticking out like this. He's sitting here, and there is the gun, and there's this guy's head, and he's talking to him. And they said, like, and yeah. they said, I, I, I said, uh, it's not at the border, it's the checkpoint. It's it's just for 20 something yeah. like every couple of hours. So with every checkpoints I, I have with this conversation, I should start from the beginning. Okay, I am not the enemy. I, am not, I do not like Lukashenko. I I just you know I just yeah. have to leave and so on and so on. Like every time it was twenty minutes wow. before this guy said, mm, maybe you are not so bad. And I said, okay, I could also I could also give a leave to some people here because actually we were praying. Okay, let us pray that we could help some family because we have some space and they go away from. And yes, I said and I said to this guy, okay, we could we could give a lift. And after these words, they said. Mm, you're not a bad person, okay, you go. No. And I was speaking in Ukraine, and I was, you know, a woman with two cats in the in the car, so obviously I wasn't the dangerous person. Yeah. And uh, all that together was helpful. Uh, so, uh, in terms of passing through the checkpoints, it sound, the police, I have to say that the police were nice, like, the police were really nice. They never, they were not rude, they didn't do anything. Like, Documents is correct, so yeah, I'm correct. You, you got, can you open the, the back of the car, they, okay, yeah. it's many suitcase, you guys can go. It's just that people at the checkpoints, they were the tough ones. Some of them were nice, but half of them were they were re representing military. Yeah, right? they were representing. The, those were the local from the territorial defense team. And defense team. Yes. The police, like yeah, the, the police, police, is different because it's, it's different. They are trained. Yeah, yeah. they they you know. But anyway, so we. Met. It is. It, uh, the, I wrote. Uh, I wrote. Uh, I read this joke in uh, in the internet. So someone in Ukraine said, "Okay, the ter Terra Barona, this this guys, defense. Uh, they are like a like a military, but a, but a wild." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there is another joke. Like the further they are from the front, the further from the front line, the worse. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, uh, we made it to like we were standing on that line, moving very slowly. It was Saturday. Um, and of course, none of us could sleep because we were both driving. If someone stops to sleep, then people cut in and it gets even longer. And how long did it take you to go like uh, five kilometers or so? Okay, so uh, we got there was Saturday something like noon or afternoon Saturday. Uh, on Sunday afternoon, I was so tired sitting in that line that I was crying and praying, God, just let us out of here. Just do anything to get us out of here. And, you know... There are people walking by, thousands of, like, literally thousands of people walking by, children, mothers, like, little kids walking their way with suitcases yeah. covered in blankets. We saw the woman, like, the car in front of us, the woman there died because there was a family, like, husband, wife, their, their son, and someone's, like, mother, like, either the demands of the police, and she went, uh, she had a thrombosis, and uh, she died. Oh. So there was an ambulance, there was a dead body on the, the side way, wow. you know, like, she didn't make it, the road was too harsh. So, mm. uh, you know, like, 20-something hours later, I was, I'm sitting in the car but, crying. But, but what, I think also, what we had, we had a, like, huge portion of adrenaline, so oh, okay. it helps you to, to not yes. sleep. Well, Sometimes. but then it yeah. you need your recovery time, you know, mm -hmm. if we were driving and then you're sleeping one night and then sitting in the car for the night and uh, whatever, 30 hours, yeah. we were tired and I was crying like, God, just do something, get us out of here. 
And then we moved, and then we got stuck near the gas station, and we didn't move for two hours. Like, for two hours, there was no movement whatsoever. And we're near the gas station. There is no gas, there's no food, there's just the, the bathroom, and that's pretty much it at the gas station. And I was thinking, like, we're sitting here in the dark near the gas station. Like, why? And all of a sudden, the woman knocks at my door. I rolled down the window as she said, well, can you, uh, you're going to Poland? I said, well, obviously, you know, she said, can you take the woman with two kids with disabilities? And I said, how many seats? And she said, two. And I was thinking, one woman, two kids, how can it be two? And I said, okay, I don't have room because I didn't have room, but that guy in front of me, he has room. So he can go knock you're at talking his talking about me too. Yeah, because he was in front of me all yeah. the time. So go knock at his window and he will help you. And I told him, said, Misha, there is a woman coming your way. Let's do something about it. So uh, she knocked at his door and um, said the same thing. And she, he said, okay, we have room. So we moved some things out of his car to my car, like, you know, up to the ceiling, to any empty space that was available. And she got in, but her, her children with disabilities one of them could walk, the girl, she could walk and she could talk, but the guy couldn't talk. Could, he was, I think he was 14 years old boy, but he couldn't walk. He was in the wheelchair. Um, he didn't talk. And, you know, just said that her neighbors brought her to this line in the car and they said, you will have to find someone to take you across the border because, you know, uh, that neighbor being a man couldn't let leave Ukraine and his wife was pregnant. So mm. they just got her to the border, to the line of the border, not to, to the border. And then she, she found us. And we were thinking like, how can we fit in that wheelchair? You know, there was no way it would fit in Misha's car or my car, like no way, absolutely. And then Misha says, why don't we just put it on the top of your car? Mm -hmm. But we need something to tie it to the, to the roof. And here we are sitting next to the gas station for two hours where there is nothing but the road. This is the family. You know, there is nothing sold there, yeah, just yeah. the ropes. And that neighbor, that woman's neighbor says, there's a gas station. I'll just go buy the rope and we'll tie the wheelchair to the to, 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 to the top of your car. Do you have a picture of the wheelchair at the top of your car? Yeah, he has it somewhere. Okay, I don't want to see that. So, and what a brilliant idea, you know. So. That's that when I realized why we were sitting next to the gas station where there is no gas or anything for two hours. So you could at least get a rope. <laughs> just get a rope because if it were like a couple hundred meters one or the other way, yeah. that rope would never be there and we would never be able to fix that wheelchair on the top of my car. So we put the wheelchair on the top of the car and uh, then we, we tell her like, you, you understand it's gonna be a long journey because we've been sitting here for 30 hours and we have moved like what, three, four kilometers out of 26. It can be days. She said, I know. And then she started calling people because uh, with uh, her children, they couldn't stay, sit in one position for too long. So she called someone from the territorial defense and she was the deputy in, uh, in one of the um, regions of Ukraine like she was a member of the local yeah. parliament or something. So she called and called and called someone and then like 15 to 30 minutes later, the car uh, showed up. I can't remember if it was the police car or just some other car, but it was the car from someone who is organizing that line. And he just says, oh, follow me. And Misha said like, okay, we're gonna go, get ready. I said, what, you know? So, and it was like in a movie uh, when there is this line of Ukrainians yeah. fleeing from the war and we're Belarusians, like supposedly bad people, and we kind of got cut in front of the line and we're passing all those cars by, like, you know, like the whole <laughs> kilometers of car and people are looking at us. And uh, in that situation, it was, um, if someone tried to cut in, they would break the windows, break off the mirrors, they would not let yeah. people cut in. But yeah. when they saw the wheelchair on top of the car, uh -huh. they didn't have any questions and problems uh -huh. with us going. Yeah. Can I see it? Let me see it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's roped on there. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so if you hadn't had the wheelchair, they would have pitched a fit. They would have been angry. Uh, to, yeah, they would have been angry. 
we, we wouldn't even risk to cut in front of the wine, let me put it this way. It was yeah, like yeah. Dangerous. dangerous. It was dangerous, dangerous because they could, especially with our license plate. Oh. The guys come with uh, <laughs> those uh, tire wrenches. Yeah. Like with the truckers, it's the same thing. Like they beat them up because, you know. It could have happened. Everyone was so tired and so mean. That'd be awful. You yeah. know, people were mm -hmm. hungry. People were sleepless. They were yeah. desperate. They yeah. had killed children, like little children. And all, all of a sudden, here we are, you know, cutting in front of the line of the Belarus license plate. In one, in one <laughs> place, we stopped uh, near the checkpoint also. Yeah, there were other checkpoints. And, and, and uh, uh, it were... Uh, it was a car and guy said okay we all he said why are you go in this line we said because we should we have uh, 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 mm -hmm. children disabilities and so on and we are waiting for the special car mm -hmm. and we will follow, follow it and he said okay we also have small children and we are here five days Aww. in the line mm -hmm. and we said okay but we we don't know we just we just waiting for the car and car came and we follow this car mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> later I asked, I, I was thinking, okay, probably it is unfair. Like they were with children. Yeah. And uh, but we were moving, well, passing by all these people, all, the, all these cars. And, and but, but God gave me this thought that He made us um, ambulance, drivers. ambulance drivers for the one day. Yeah. She's yeah. very, very smart. <laughs> you cannot, wow. you cannot, like, have this idea only can't have this idea right yes so it took us another 24 hours since that woman joined us to and to sorry sorry uh this is a good point and i was going ah uh, yeah yeah and uh this Oksana, she said she she just she, she was keeping like saying she, she kept saying okay thank you thank you thank you mm -hmm. and how much we owe you i said no 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 don't you don't, you don't say anything so and she's and and i said okay I thought to myself, I, I can I can uh, speak about God now. Good it's moment. a good moment. I said, you know, we're Christian and we prayed before we got into the line that we, we want to help some family. So we prayed that God send us the family that we could help. And he said, you know what? We also pray that God send us a drivers. Oh, oh, well. True that she was she also she was a Christian and she went to church and she asked she knocked at many windows, yeah. but nobody had room. Nobody. And and can you yeah. I, I can I can describe you the picture like what is the chances to meet us? Yeah. Is just I don't know. Because next day uh, the friends of our friend they were going on the same place by foot. Uh, they come there by taxi, mm -hmm. and uh, so they start to to walk, and they come to every car and said, "Okay, we pay one thousand and five hundred dollars. Just give us a lift." And no one took them. Uh, and, no one had had they, them in the car. And they they go. They went to the border by foot, like yeah. twenty five uh, kilometers with their bags. Yeah. They walk 25 kilometers. Yeah, in February. No, oh. in February. And in the first days at the border, there yeah, was no like cell call. There was no points. Like they, there was not like hot food and hot drink. There was nothing organized there. Oh. Later, the volunteers got together. They started like they were standing every several kilometers, giving hot food and hot drinks and everything. But the first two days were so hard for the, especially for women and children, yeah. because it was like they were ha they had. First, they had to walk 20 something kilometers on foot mm. in the cold. Doesn't matter, day, night, they just yeah, walked. This was winter, right? It was yeah. end of so February, February, yeah. But then they had to wait another 20 something hours at the border to get through the line because there were so many people. And again, there was nothing there. No bathroom, no nothing. So it, 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 was, it was very hard. So, um, some, some, if you remember, it were also guys from, I don't know, maybe from Iran, right? like we were looking at the face and they said, okay, just give us a lift to the border. It was, I think, 10 kilometers. Yeah, we, that was it. We pay, okay, just name the any money, we will pay. And I said, we don't have place. We don't have room because... Let's help you. So, uh, yeah, it took us another 24 hours to get to, the, like, since she met us, to get to the border because there were checkpoints and at the last checkpoint, the guy went crazy, like Misha said, he said like, this car is not going anywhere until the war is over, you know, they're enemies, etc. So she started, Oksana, 
She started screaming. Yeah, she started screaming so loud. He, he they even couldn't stay. <laughs> <laughs> like they they were they said so they took the guy like we're gonna take him away and then you go. So they took him away and then we just so, yeah, we, and we left. Yeah, because she was so loud. <laughs> It helped us. <laughs> so, yeah, then, then, you know, we got to, to the border, like there were many lines, many hours of waiting, but eventually we made it to the border. Monday night, we were in Poland, like Monday, I think like 9, maybe 10, maybe 8 o'clock, I can't remember, we were in Poland. But then again, her, uh, Oksana's friends met her and the children and they took them to whatever. And, we were had to go to a we are friends on facebook now. yeah oh that's so nice and we had to go to my friend's apartment it was near warsaw so it took us another night to get there because we we were stopping every 40 minutes to an hour for 10 15 minutes now because i was i never had that experience before when i was you know i was driving i was sleeping with my eyes open yeah and i was it, it's it's interesting it's very not it's unsafe so every time either of us would feel something like that yeah. we would say why don't we just pull over and take wow. a nap and maybe six o'clock on tuesday we made it to my friend's apartment in I, warsaw. near warsaw i went upstairs like my my legs were shaking i was holding against the wall so not to fall we brought the cats we brought just the very basic suitcase with pajamas and everything took a shower and we just went to bed and slept. And all that journey to like to go to the bathroom, you just go out in the woods, right? You walk yeah. walk over yeah. the embankment. Yeah, yeah. So thousands of people just when you gotta go, you gotta go, right? No, no one cares. Obviously. Yeah, nobody. Well, cares. I was thinking about it, and I took some uh, like pads, like for the bed, you know. Yeah. I had it in case we bought it for the cats to put in, into their uh, mm -hmm. crate if they need to, just in case. But I thought, well, the worst case scenario, I could use it. But I never had to because we didn't drink much, we didn't eat much. Uh, mm -hmm. We had food, like we had the corn and tuna and everything. We had 20 liters of water. Misha had the camp kettle, like they could plug in and uh, make hot tea. So we, compared to the rest, to many in that line, yeah, you were more prepared. We were prepared, and, yeah. You know, at least we had water. But even with our extra gas and food and water, if it wasn't for that woman, we would have we would have stayed there three more days. And I think I might be out of gas by then and probably would have to leave one of the cars. So yeah. the reason we took both cars, because first of all, we didn't know where we were going. And then we were thinking if well, something happens along the way, if yeah. someone not right. bombs, but shoots the tires yeah, or something. At least we can get into the other yeah. car. You know, like just leave one of them with the stuff and get. Well, the thing is, you, you didn't know what will happen if you leave the car there, uh, you know, like back at your place. Right? We didn't think about that. We yeah, just wanted because... to see on the road. We just wanted to make yeah. sure we'll get to the point of destination. Right. We didn't know what what it was. Yeah. But at that point, we heard that some of the road, roads, like there were, uh, there were shooting at the road. There was some road shootings, right. and, or the rockets were flying. Mm. And That's we were thinking if something happens, like for example, we break, we break the tires, the tires tore, and or something happens to the car mechanically, or someone shoots the some part of it, and the car will not be able to move. Oh, maybe it would be a car. Uh, car. Accident. Car accident. Oh, car accident. You, you one car and yeah. Yes another. We just took two because we didn't yes. know how far we would need to go. Yeah, you were lucky that you had two cars to take, yeah. too. You know, we, we thought of, I thought of this often, like, what would I do, what would we do if all of a sudden we are told, like, you have to leave home in an hour? Oh, I know. And who do you leave the keys with? If your neighbor is gone, like, do you empty your fridge? What do you take? You know, it's just, it's it's the stress of itself. Just it's just that, you know, like, yes. what about your bank account? Like, where do you get your money? You, know, oh, you go to ATM? By the time we got to Lviv, uh, Ukraine blocked the accounts of all uh, Russians and Belarusians. Really? Yeah, so whatever was there in those accounts, we still so don't. It still? It's still there, but I don't have any access to it. It's blocked. Yeah. And I cannot unblock it until at least the end of the war. So we got to the. 
I was so happy we had some cash because I was thinking, you know, maybe I, I put some extra money on the bank account hours before we left. Hours. Mm -hmm. Because I was thinking, well, if there's trouble with exchange rate, at least in you know, yeah, yeah. anywhere I can pay for the gas or something with the card. <laughs> Forget it. No. You know, they were, yeah. By the time we got to the region, our accounts were blocked and they still are. Wow. Mm. Oh man, yeah. that's a mess. So, yeah. And actually, <clears throat> when we, uh, after this, uh, friends, Sasha, we we went to Gdańsk. Mm -hmm. and, I have a cousin uh, there. Uh, yeah, stay with with them one week, and we were all the week we were reading the news. Uh, the there were two things we had to do. We had to figure out what's next because not nothing like that mm -hmm. has ever happened to us. You know, I've never been. The mission has never been to refugees. You know, we lived in a nice country. Mm -hmm. We speak the language. Yeah. We haven't. We're educated. We had our own little business, and all of a sudden, boom, we're at the refugees. You know, mm -hmm. who would have thought? So um, we try to figure out what our next steps are, what to do. I called several embassies. My mom is a U.S. citizen, so I called the U.S. embassy and I was like, is there anything? I tried to ask. I never got to the line. I had to go there twice to ask that question. So um, I called every single embassy, organization, Red Cross, UNHCR, anyone. I could know everyone. I knew me, you know, just to try to understand what to do next. And there was no answer. No one knew what to do. And the other thing we were, we were doing, like we were surfing the news every single hour. Like, yeah. The Russians are in Kyiv, Russian tanks are in Kyiv, this is being bombed, this is being bombed, you know, they're attacking this, this. And like two weeks after the war, like we, space, we stayed for one week, we stayed with my friend, for the next week we went to my cousin to Dansk. And we were so tired, like emotionally, we couldn't handle it anymore. And we... <laughs> We prayed. Uh, we, I said, Misha, let's just go out to to the mall just to get some milk and just walk and talk, just you know, by ourselves without anyone else being there. So we went and we prayed. God, just can you make us useful? We have all this time, you know, we have all the time in the world. We have nothing to do, we have no idea where to go to. We just want to be helpful, you know. Make us well, some people started already well, to volunteer, yeah. so yeah, we said, yeah. God help us to do well also. You know, sitting, reading the news all the time, it's no good to anyone, so maybe yeah. we can do something. And what do you think? Maybe an hour or two hours later, Joel called us and he said, like, we're doing this in Dublin. Do you guys want to join us? Because I think you and we need be people helpful. who speak English. Yeah, we need people who speak English and Ukrainian. Yeah. No, what a coincidence! And we said we're gonna be there tomorrow. So we bought the milk, went to my uh, cousin's apartment. I said we're leaving tomorrow. Yeah. So that's uh, awesome. So fast, we said yeah, sure. They need our help. No, oh, <laughs> that's so nice. Yeah, they yeah. need our help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. The truth is, yeah, that we came to Lublin and then we started working on this project delivering humanitarian aid to Ukraine with Convoy of Hope. And we're still here seven, is it seven months later? You're working with Convoy of Hope? Yeah, that's why you're here in England. That's yeah. why we're that's here. We actually helped, okay. we helped yeah. get uh, established here and when they first came. Yeah, like beginning, like March. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. we well, got missionaries, well, so you. they asked us to. So what, what do you do specifically? Yeah, yeah, what are you doing? Uh, I am helping to, um, in warehouse operations, Good I put the trucks, I put wow, together. Wow, nice. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Actually, I, you work with our organization. So. Yeah. Now I work. Uh, the first three months, were, yeah. I was a volunteer. Uh -huh. uh, and then they realized that they needed someone to stay here because yeah. they, it was, wow. you know, it's inconvenient to bring a group of people every time. It's like tickets, yeah. and right. car, apartment, yeah. insurances, and everything. Yeah. So they were looking for the person to stay, you know, and I was there for three months already going there every single day except for Saturday, Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. So it worked for both of us. I hope it works for them, just like it works for me. But now I'm actually working for them and uh, good for you. That's, yeah. She's the boss. Right. She's yeah. the boss. Yeah. She's the manager in the warehouse. She runs the whole enchilada. Yeah. And, and by the way, and uh, was also interesting. We have a lot of miracles we could say. Because before that we, we left Ukraine, I said to Sasha, okay, let's start to pray that we could go to Europe because we want, I want to have like more to European and like because we have some bodies here. And Sasha said, and Sasha said, I don't have visa. I said, Yes, you don't have visa, but let us pray. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we got this. You see the irony? <laughs> yes. and, uh, yes. uh, we, wa we wanted to give another uh, the, the card that I was using uh, yeah. to some missionaries or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, we prayed for this. And here in the church, once pastor said, 
Okay, please ask someone. We need a car for to help the um, the refugees because every every car of us is uh, broken and we need to rent. And I said we just uh, look at each other right so there. The the truck truck truck. <laughs> so we gave them this car. So they. Oh, well, that was so nice. Praise the Lord. We have a lot of answers. Uh, Oh, well, thank you for sharing. That was so yeah, wonderful. It's so, so good to know because I, I know the stories from people walking, mm -hmm. but you know, you being in a in a car, you know, you have two cars, and then also people asking for help because that was, you know, we we didn't know that. I I mean, you know.